So the question, of course, has evil arrived at a place, at a point where it will prompt the return of Jesus Christ? Of course, we're hearing this, aren't we? We all want the return of the Lord and sin seems to have gone out of control. In fact, in my opinion, it has become emboldened. We've got to answer this question. Will the sin of the world cause Jesus, cause God to respond and deal with the problem? In order to understand the answer, we first of all have to answer three other questions. Number one, why did Jesus come in the first place? Number two, who is God? And number three, what's he returning for? When Jesus returns, what will he be returning for? Well, let me answer the second one first. Who is God? Well, of course, we know that God is omnipotent. He is almighty God. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. And he is omnipresent. You can't get away from God. Get one of those rockets and go to Mars if you want, but you still won't get away from God. God is almighty God. That's who he is. Why did Jesus come here in the first place? Well, the answer, of course, is in John chapter 3. The word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, you can't stop there. Because to answer the question as to why he came, we have to read the next verse. And the next verse says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God's MO, if you like, wasn't to condemn, but to save. To understand God is to understand that his desire, the purpose of all of this, is an everlasting relationship with you and I. Yes, there will be a judgment day. But the question in this video is why will Jesus return? What will prompt his return? Well, if we're going to answer that, properly, we need to go to scripture once again, don't we? Let's have a look together at Matthew 24 verse 42. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour of the Lord's return. So first of all, we don't know when. We can look at signs. Yes, absolutely. We can see what's happening in the world. We can see things lining up. Let's go on. In Revelation 22, verse 12, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. I preached a message just recently on leaning forward. I lean forward. God isn't just an optimist or positive. God is eternally looking for the best outcome in every life. God is looking for to reward his people, to bless us. If we keep going in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, But the end of all things is at hand, and therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. There was a certain expectation on all the disciples that Jesus would return soon, quickly. Well, of course, as we know, that was 2,000 years ago. Of course, in the expanse of time, A thousand years is as a day and a day is as a thousand years. Uh, There's a lot of people to get saved. And furthermore, when you read all of these scriptures, you go into Acts chapter 1 verse 10, 1 John 2 28 and so on and so on and so on. All of these verses are written to the church. It seems evident to me from reading scripture, that God is focusing in on his church. 
Now listen to me. I do believe sin has become emboldened. There's no doubt about that. However, when you look right throughout history, there have been periods of time, even in our living memory, where countries, where places have been brutalized by dictators that have slaughtered, hurt, maimed people. And you would think, God, you know, isn't this enough? Well, the answer, whether or not sin or the abundance of sin will prompt the return of Christ is found in Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Moreover, the law uh, entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. We happen to know that the mercy of God, his mercies endure forever. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. I don't believe the world will determine the return of Christ. I believe the church will. We could be talking right now about the New Jerusalem and the church and this bride of Christ being perfected. In other words, being matured and ready. The concern that I have looking at the church world right, the church worldwide right now is I see many local churches doing well, growing, excited about the things of God. And I see some uh, just wandering around, um, not preaching what Christ said to preach. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said to a group recently that don't pray for revival. Nobody ever prayed for revival really and got it. What they did was they behaved righteously. They lived out the gospel in their hearts. As it were, the revival started within them, within their heart. And there was an overflow to others. It's the Holy Spirit that brings revival. And when we walk in the Holy Spirit, God moves. I said to this group again, they were quite surprised when I said, don't bother praying for salvations. And they looked at me, I said, why would you do that? When you preach the gospel, the Holy Spirit will save people. Pray that we will be burdened for the lost. And that burden will cause us to preach the good news. It is good news. And so this is the answer that I have for you. Will sin and the abundance of it, will evil bring about the return of Jesus Christ? I don't believe that at all. I believe that Almighty God is not moved or shaken or making his decisions based on the devil, based on evil. I believe he's making them based on righteousness. God is a righteous God. His grace is from everlasting. His, his mercy is from everlasting. His love is is from everlasting. He did not come here to condemn. Yes, there'll be a judgment day. Oh yeah. However, there's many people to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as, as their savior, uh, to receive eternal life. That is the purpose for why Jesus came. And that is the very purpose as to why he will return. For a church without spot or blemish, a church that is mature, a church that is unified in our belief that it is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the goodness of God that leads people to a repented walk with him. So friend, sure, sin and evil is abounding, but praise our living Lord, hey, because where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Let us all, as Christians, focus in on that which is good, that which is acceptable, that which is perfect. Let us not be sideswiped by other things that are going wrong. Because if you know anything about history, history has seen the pendulum go from one way to the other. Great sin, great evil, and then we have seen the Holy Spirit move in great righteousness upon this planet. God loves you. How about what you do is not focus on those things that are evil, 
but focus in on those things that are good. To take a leaf out of Stephen's life, where about to be stoned and killed, he saw heaven, he saw Jesus, and that which was evil had absolutely no relevance to him at all, for he could see heaven. Let us focus in on the gospel of Jesus Christ and be a church that rejoices together, that sings songs together, that is unified together, that loves one another, as they did in Acts chapter 2, where they ate their food with gladness, simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Jesus is returning for the church. And that is what will prompt the return of Jesus Christ. I would suggest that what we do is all grow in God. If we want Jesus to return even faster, let us preach the gospel. Let's get that family saved. Let's preach the gospel in and out of season. Let's tell people God loves them and he came to let them know.